Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together a powerful small form factor mini ITX gaming PC. This is actually a system I've been wanting to do for a while, but never really got around to it. And if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I love my small form factor mini PCs. And usually when I do a build like this, we try to just use the built-in Radeon graphics on a Ryzen APU. But with this one, we're going with a dedicated GPU because we're going to get a lot better performance out of this GPU with this small form factor setup. So starting out with the case, I wanted to go as small as possible with a dedicated GPU. I went with the K39. This is from SGPC. I think a couple different manufacturers make it. But this is the newer version with USB Type-C up front. We've also got an acrylic side panel you can swap out if you want to. But the K39 does utilize a flex power supply, so you need one of these smaller power supplies, and I went with a 400 watt. The volume on this case is around 4.7 liters, so it is quite small, and it only supports up to a 180 millimeter graphics card. And with it being so small, they do include two different handles you can add to this. Personally, I'm going to be using this orange handle on the top, and since it's such a small form factor case, it does make a really great portable desktop, especially with a handle attached. I think it looks really good like this. When it comes to the parts used in this build, I will leave links in the description, but for the motherboard, I went with the ROG Strix B550i Gaming. The CPU is a Ryzen 5700G, 8 cores, 16 threads, with a boost clock up to 4.6 GHz. We've got 16 GB of DDR4 running at 3600 MHz, and this is the Corsair RGB, so it should look pretty decent in the case. I needed a cooler that was under 55 millimeters, so I went with the Thermalrite X47, this is the copper version. And for the GPU we're going to be using here, this is a GTX 1660 non-TI variant. We've got 6 gigabytes of VRAM, and I picked this up on Craigslist about a year ago for a really good deal. It should fit really nicely inside of the K39 case and offer some really good 1080p performance. And when it comes to storage, I went with a 1TB Crucial NVMe SSD. I've already got it installed in the motherboard slot, so we're good to go there. This isn't going to be a build tutorial, but I will go over a few things with this case. First thing I want to do is go ahead and get my CPU cooler and RAM installed on the motherboard itself. And when it's all said and done, it looks something like this. And with the 5700G and a nice little overclock on the GPU, it does a pretty good job by itself. But we want to add more to this, and we will have room in the case. And I think the 5700G paired up with that 1660 is going to do a pretty great job at 1080p. When it comes to building inside of the K39, you will need a riser cable. Some of these cases come with it, some of them don't. Unfortunately, the one that I ordered didn't come with a riser cable. So I picked up a 200mm thermal take. And the way this one is set up, being only 200 millimeters long, it's just not going to cut it. So I did have to go with a longer cable. Luckily, I had one laying around that was 250 millimeters, which is more than enough. It's a little longer than I needed. So I actually really like the K39 case. You can pull the back right off. It just makes it a lot easier to get everything installed. In between the motherboard and the chassis itself, or over the chassis brace right there in the middle, but if you do end up running it behind the motherboard, just make sure you have enough clearance and your cable is well shielded. So I've got everything mounted up, looking pretty good here. Now it's time to install the GPU. I opted not to install the PSU just yet. I wanted to get everything else set up. And it might present a problem, you know, plugging all the cables in, but I think I can work around it. And the GPU sits in here really nicely. Only thing I've noticed here is only one of these holes lines up. And that's because I'm not using the correct riser cable. But with one of those in and the back side of the GPU bracket connected, this isn't going to go anywhere. It's going to be fine. And if I need to, I can always order another cable that fits perfectly. And I'm actually glad that this one at least lined up here. The GPU is stable. It's not going to go anywhere. And the last thing I really need to do is install the PSU and get everything wired up. It was definitely a little bit of a pain getting everything cleaned up because I'm not using a modular power supply, but the price difference between a modular and a non-modular is absolutely ridiculous, and I didn't want to go all out. And by using just a couple zip ties in the correct locations, I think it does look pretty good. It's hard to come across on camera to show you really how small this is, but it is an absolutely tiny build. Hopefully I've plugged that power button in correctly, but I've got all new components on this board, so it might take a sec. There we go. Okay, we got the fan spinning, got the RGB, and it's not overkill. I love the placement of the RAM here. I think it does add to the whole aesthetic of the case. I'm not a huge fan of decking everything out in RGB, but a little bit of it does go a long way. I'm going to go ahead and get Windows set up and install some games. 
All right, so far so good. I've used this cooler for the 5700G in the past and never had any issues with it. And we're at the stock clocks. I didn't do any overclocking. Eight cores, 16 threads. We got a boost up to 4.6. We've got that 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3600 megahertz and the GTX 1660. Would have been nice if it was a TI variant or even a 3060, but I'm gonna get by with this. It's gonna do a great job at 1080p. In this video, I'm going to run some benchmarks, we'll test out some PC games, and some high-end emulation. But first up, let's go ahead and test a game. I got all the drivers updated and everything like that. We'll go with God of War. And here it is. We're at 1080p, high settings, no resolution scale or anything like that going on. Looking pretty decent, getting an average of around 72 FPS. Definitely playable, and with a system like this, I wouldn't mind turning V-Sync on and just running these games at 60, 1080p. And with the form factor, and given that I'm using that 1660 with a single fan, I really didn't want to do any overclocking, but I could get a bit more out of it. Maybe 200 megahertz on the core over there on the GPU. Get a little more, but we're good to go if I turn V-Sync on, and this is perfectly playable. I did want to take a look at a couple benchmarks, and first up we have Geekbench 5, single core, 1451, multi, 8345, and given that this is a Zen 3 CPU, I figured we'd get some good scores here with Geekbench, but now it's time to move over to some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark Firestrike. We got a total score here of 12,511, and the final one I ran here was Time Spy, coming in with a really nice score of 5,596. Not bad at all for the size of this build, but these are synthetic benchmarks, and I really want to see how it performs with more games. Next up, we've got The Witcher 3, 1080p, high settings in the graphics area and post-processing. I'm getting an average of 75 FPS. And I played the heck out of this game when it was first released. I haven't really gone back to it with high graphic settings or very high graphic settings. It still looks really, really good. Moving over to Elden Ring, we're at 1080p, high settings, and I do get a few dips here and there, but uh, I'm going to kind of chalk that up to the game itself. I think we have more than enough GPU and CPU power to run this game at a constant 60, and with some more updates, we should definitely be good to go. I still love testing out GTA 5, 1080p with a high, very high mix here. Got a few of the settings mixed around a little bit, and we might be able to just go ahead and do very high with this at 60, but I was just kind of shooting for more FPS here, and by the end of this, I had an average of 138 FPS. Next on the list, we have Cyberpunk 2077, and with the new patches for Cyberpunk 2077, we're getting a lot better performance on lower-end hardware. With this, I did turn V-Sync on because I was getting a lot of screen tearing. I was only getting an average of around 64, but the screen tearing was really bad, so I turned V-Sync on, and it looks pretty decent like this. We're at a low-medium mix 1080p. Now it's time to see how this thing handles emulation, and first up we have PS2, and with that 1660 we can take this up to 4K. If you were just running that 5700G, this game here, 720p, maybe even 1080 with a few hacks, but 4K was kind of out of the question, at least for this game here, but with that 1660 paired up with this CPU, 4K all day with this. Here we have Citra, the 3DS emulator, and this relies heavily on OpenGL. With built-in Radeon graphics, I've never had really good luck with this, at least with upscaling. But with NVIDIA cards, even the 1650, depending on the game, 2x, 3x, 4x, and with this one here, DOA Dimensions, we're at 4x. And finally, at least for this video, we have PS3 using RPCS3, Vulcan Backend, 1080p, and there are some games we can do 4K with the 1660. This one was a little out of the question, I was getting some stuttering at 4K, but uh, at 1080p, it still looks great, running at 60, and we're only pulling around 60 watts from that 5700G. Total system power consumption is another thing I like to measure with these smaller builds. I have this plugged into a kilowatt meter, and at idle we average around 34 watts. 
while gaming. It does jump up to 202 watts. And the maximum I could get this to pull from the wall while maxing out the CPU and the GPU was 238 watts. So yeah, for a small form factor build, I think this does a really great job. Of course, if you can get a card that'll fit in this case, you can go a lot higher in with it if you want to. But with the build I have here using the 5700G and the 1660, I'm more than happy with the performance. And this thing will actually fit in a backpack. You could go ahead and carry this around basically anywhere you want. And remember, you always got that handle too. But yeah, I think this build turned out great, and I absolutely love this case. The K39 is an awesome little case. Does take a little more to build it, but in the end, it's definitely worth it. And they do sell these in a few different colors. I've seen red, black, blue, silver, and white. Obviously, we opted for the white version here. That was basically the only one I could get in time. And I could definitely recommend this case if you're looking to build a mini ITX rig. So if you're interested, I'm going to leave links in the description for everything I used in this build. But uh, that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you want to see anything else running on this, or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.